Another green arrow in game week 26, and I'm up to 47k overall. But unfortunately, Solanke and Huang both look to be injured. So I've got a bit to think about going into game week 27. Here is my team selection. All right, starting with the goalkeepers and defenders then. I'm going to start with Martinez in goal. I think he's got the better fixture of the two goalkeeping options I have. Obviously, Martinez playing Luton, Dubravka playing Wolves. I think Wolves slightly have the edge on Luton as a fixture. And I think, well, considering Newcastle are the worst defence in the league for expected goals conceded over the last couple of months, I think I've got to go for Martinez, really, even with the injuries that Villa have in defence. I'm really happy with my Arsenal defensive double up. Unfortunately, they didn't keep a clean sheet in game week 26, but I'm looking forward to game week 27 against Sheffield United. I'm hoping both Gabriel and Saliba can keep a clean sheet and also potentially get on the end of some free kicks in corners. Now Arsenal have Declan Rice taking their crosses, you know, the free kicks in corners. They look absolutely unbelievable from set pieces, right? Both Gabriel and Saliba are offering goal threats. So not only do I reckon I can get some clean sheets out of them, I reckon I can get some attacking returns as well. Now, I have heard on the grapevine that Udogi is back in full training. I'll wait for, you know, final confirmation by Ange in his press conference as to whether he's going to play and he's, he's fit to play. I think at the moment I'm favouring it on the side of starting Udogi. Crystal Palace is a really decent fixture, and I'd say looking at the other two defenders I could play, Botman and Taylor, I think Udogi has the stronger fixture of three. And has some really good attacking upside as well. I mean, he basically sometimes plays as a striker. I mean, that's how far forward he gets in that inverted fullback role. Sometimes he can be more advanced than the centre forward. That's that's how he plays. And this season, he's been really good for attacking returns. And I've got to say, a lot of people saying, well, across the season, really, favouring Udogi over, oh, sorry, Poro over Udogi for obviously the attacking upside that Poro has, but... Udogi isn't that far off Poro, right? And I really like him as an option. So I've kept him in my team for this long. I've sold Poro in previous game weeks. I kept Udogi because he was cheaper. Hopefully that pays off in game week 27. On to the midfield then. And I've got Saka, Foden, Palmer and Bowen starting for me at the moment. As you can see there, an injured Huang on my bench. I think I'm going to use my transfer on Huang this week. Given I've got Solanke up front, that's a giveaway for what's coming later. But with his double in 28, and the fact that Huang's injury is a hamstring injury and Solanke's is more of a knee injury, I think Solanke could be back sooner than Huang. I think Huang, with the nature of a hamstring injury, is probably going to miss three or four weeks, right? Which I think definitely makes him a sell. That probably goes down as my worst transfer of the season so far. But I mean, who was to know that he was going to get injured, right? That's such an unlucky thing to happen. But ultimately, I've still got a decent team without him, certainly from a midfield perspective. I think, you know, these four guys are probably... Some of the best four midfielders in the game, I would say. Saka, obviously, in fantastic form. And he's actually the top player for expected points, according to Draft Town in Game Week 27. He's obviously got Sheffield United, a really nice fixture. Foden got rested in the FA Cup. So hopefully he's ready to... Well, I support Man United. So hopefully he doesn't do too much damage. But I do think City are about to give Man United an absolute smash in. Palmer, I mean, I really like him. So glad that I've kept hold of him. I mean, he's clearly Chelsea's talisman. Brentford's a really good fixture, in my opinion. Brentford have not looked that clever in recent game weeks, particularly defensively. They shipped a fair few goals. Newcastle and Arsenal following that, I'll admit, well, obviously he doesn't have the Arsenal game because he blanks in game week 29. But Newcastle after that, obviously, as I said, with Botman, they're the worst defence in the league for XGC, right? So I'm really happy to have Palmer for the next couple of game weeks. And then Bowen's got a couple of kind fixtures coming up as well. And obviously a game against Villa in 29. Everton and Burnley. I mean, see what he can do against Everton. And then Burnley, I think, is a really nice fixture to play him for. Huang, though, I think is going to be my transfer out. I've got a few players that I'm eyeing up to replace him. Now, my first instinct was to look at Hyung min Son. I mean, the guy's one of the best players in the league. Spurs is talisman. Nailed to start. Plays 90. An absolutely elite finisher. As you can see, he historically overperforms his underlying numbers. So the fact he scored 12 goals from 7 XG is not, you know, it's not unusual for him to play like that. Fixtures he's got coming up are really nice. Obviously got a game in game week 29 as well. Crystal Palace, Villa, who are not amazing defensively. Fulham, Luton and West Ham. I mean, that's a really nice fixture. Right? And he's looking back, fully fit, ready to go from the Asia Cup. Unfortunately for me though, I'm 0.1 million short of doing Huang to Son. So I have to rule him out. I, I can't get him. 
But the reason I mentioned it, right, is if you're watching this video and want to sell Huang, you probably, well, you might have enough in the bank to get Son. And if you do, he should be your first choice. The other player I'm thinking of eyeing up because, well, I can't get Son is Douglas Luiz. The guy just keeps scoring goals. In previous game weeks, I've said, oh, he's a centre defensive midfielder. He's no good. I wouldn't go anywhere near him. But ultimately, I think he's proved this season he's a goal scorer midfielder, right? He's got nine goals and 25 starts, four assists. Now to start for Villa, their penalty taker, plays 90 minutes, has a fixture in game week 29. He's really good for bonus points when he does return. When he gets an attacking return, he usually maximizes the bonus points as well for the other things that he does in the games and ultimately he's one of the best players at this price point right palmer and douglas louise are probably the leading players you know week on week at that sort of price and i think it'd be naive to overlook douglas louise with the goal scoring form he's in you know his nailedness in the team the fact he takes penalties he's got a game in game week 29 and some really decent fixtures coming up too now if i wasn't free hitting in game week 29 i think douglas louise would be my transfer in right but Ross Barkley, he does have a fixture as well in game week 29, but he's also got a double game week in game week 28. And I like the idea of having a player that doubles in 28. And I think given I'm free hitting in 29, quite like the idea of Barkley. 5 million. I think the best midfielder playing for Luton in the game. I would say obviously Luton are poor defensively, right? They're not keeping clean sheets, but they're not really having any issues scoring goals. And the fact that I'm 0.1 off doing Huang to Son, I have to look elsewhere. And particularly when I look at players that could potentially challenge Son for points over the next couple of game weeks, I think Barkley is one of the players that can do it. And in general, if you look at the midfield that I've got in the game at the moment, right? There's not many top midfielders, bar Salah maybe, and Son that you could say I was missing. And given that I can't afford either of them, you know, there's a shortage of midfield options is basically what I'm trying to say. And given that he's got three fixtures over the next couple of game weeks, I think I might be going for Ross Barkley. Only 5 million, so be very happy to just bench him when I don't want to play him. I've got plenty of cash in the bank, so I don't need to worry about going to slightly more expensive than bargain basement for my like bench midfielder. I'll admit his attacking returns across the season so far are not groundbreaking. He's got seven in 18 starts. But considering the fixtures he's got coming up are not too bad, Villa, I'd back Luton to score against Villa, even though I've got Martinez in goal. And then Palace and Bournemouth in game week 28 as a double. I mean, I'd back Luton to return in both of those games, and Barkley could well be involved in that. So, yeah, I really like him as an option, and I think I'm going to consider him. Up front, then, I've got the pretty common front three for most players, Solanke, Haaland and Watkins. As I was saying, I think my priority transfer is going to be to sell Huang over Solanke. Looking at the nature of their injuries, I think Huang is going to be out longer term. And as for Solanke, I really want him if he's going to be fit for next week. So I'm happy, even if it's just to get more information, I'm happy to keep him in my team and just bench him for this week. Because... If he's fit for game week 28, I'd suggest he's by far and away the best captain, given he's got Sheffield United and Luton at home. So for that reason, I can't justify selling him. So yeah, I think Huang is going to be my transfer out. Haaland is my captain. I think I'd just, just prefer him to Saka. I think there's not a whole lot to split it in terms of fixtures. You look at the stats, Man United technically have a better defence than Sheffield United. But watching both teams, I still think Sheffield United give a better account of themselves defensively than Man United have done recently. Haaland at the Etihad is just a dangerous prospect. Off the back of five goals in the cup, I think he's probably the best captain. And I just wanted to finish then with what I think my team is going to look like for Game Week 27. And I think I'm actually going to bring in Ross Barkley. I'm free hitting in Game Week 29, so ultimately I don't really need to pay attention to the fixtures in that week. Locking myself into a free hit also means that I can maximise my team for double game week 28. And I really like the idea of owning either Solanke or Morris. If Solanke's injured for game week 28, I think I'll just go for Morris. Basically, I just want to own as many double game week players as I can because I think there are some points to be had in those games, particularly for attacking players, right? And I think this is an argument you can have for free hit or in 29 or not as well. I don't think defensively it's particularly that exciting, but with the sheer amount of goals we're seeing in the Premier League this season, if there's a double game week or a blank, you know you want to maximise the number of midfielders and forwards that you have in your team. You basically want to be 3-4-3 or 3-5-2 with a filled out midfield and attack of the best players you can pick. That's my opinion. Just with the amount of goals we're seeing in the Premier League at the moment, you know points from defenders are few and far between bar probably the Arsenal lot at the moment, right? And Harry Maguire has actually been doing decently recently. 
But yeah, I just think I want to maximise my potential for getting attacking returns. And Barkley, over the next couple of game weeks, I think probably offers me that. All right, and that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed that and found it useful, just getting an insight into what I'm thinking of doing with my team. If you enjoyed it, please leave me a like rating. Let me know in the comments if you think I should do something differently with my team. I think based on the information I have, I think I should probably transfer it Huang, but you might have a different suggestion as to who I can bring in. So I'd definitely be interested in hearing that in the comments. Subscribe to the Golden Gold channel, which should be just here if you want to see more content from me. And I'll be back again with the deadline stream on Saturday morning.